Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and we're going to play Legendary Iron Man Lone Wolf Run where we are trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty with only one soldier permission and that is going to be our last Golden Path mission. It's time for the Black Side Data mission uh, where we're going to get uh, the, um, the suit for the commander Codex. Archon, Sectopod, Officers, lots and lots of um, normal advents. And Andromedon, Spectre, which we need to be a bit careful about. And that's pretty much it, 16, but it's a very difficult mission, so we might as well run into one of the Chosens. If that would be the case, I think uh, it would be the Hunter here. I'm not so afraid about taking him on 101. So the person that we're going to take is Hogbite. Uh, by now, you can see his little tiny hit points here. I think we're at 55 at the moment, a similar amount of movement. And we're going to test if Hogbite is really ready, if he can indeed deal with uh, preparation for the final mission. I'm still not happy with uh, the amount of hit points uh, and movement that he has. There's there's more. We can get even crazier. We can break the game even further. And we probably should or need to do it in order to be successful on the last mission, which is really, really hard. Good, and here we go. Look at that. We even got a sidekick. Nice little double agent. Never hurts having one. And certainly doesn't hurt going in with uh, Hogbite onto a mission. There's no timer in here, which makes it very, very fun. So double movement of this guy, Hogbite easily single moves, just because he can. And we know that there are 31 enemies over here. All shapes and forms. I think we should kind of leave the trooper sort of to the back, I would say. Let's scout a bit with Hogbite in the meantime. The man simply moves over the rooftop. He defies physics. by simply moving across the entire map. All right, two towers. I am definitely not afraid of them. Yeah, we can deal with the towers later. First things first. Time for a good old righteous strike for this Archon here. Nice. Did we just trigger another pack? No. Seem to be fine. But do you know what is completely imbalanced? Absolutely. Breaking the speed of light by traveling back, defying reality. Hogbite essentially has learned the teleport ability of the codices. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. He doesn't like skirmishers. I can't um, offer him one. And really nothing other than the regener uh, regeneration will keep him from getting completely and utterly destroyed. He has four armor, which might be something that our grenade can take care of. Uh, off. We do have one grenade on our trooper, and I intend to use it wisely.
His shots will deal no damage whatsoever to us. Let's take a little sneak peek. All right, where is everyone? Oh, right here. Perfect. Good. Um, you know... Okay, I think the Codex is actually positioned here. Anyways. Yep, there we go. Codex clones itself. And we might just go back. Codex will be able to follow us, but I don't think that that's a big issue. Just going to Overwatch. Teleportation doesn't trigger Overwatch, but that's still fine. Well, we got an Overwatch right there. What? Are you kidding me? Did he also learn the secret of of essentially moving as far as you as he wants? That was one of the single longest uh, moves that I've seen from from an Archon ever. Got to be more careful with our double agent. Time to kill the Archon. I'm still surprised. That was a really, really far movement. Archon is down. We're going to position ourselves here in case that the Codex is just moving. The We're going to kill it. There we go. Well, joke's on you, my friend. You just reflected yourself to death. Two down, and we do have two towers to go. <laughs> Although it is unfair, it's at the same time also incredibly funny to, to, go. Uh, to see someone with such a huge movement interact. Okay, time to soften up the tower. And I think we've just triggered something. Ooh. Ooh. We've not just triggered something, we definitely have triggered something. Alright, time to move away. Like far, far away. Yeah, 
And we're keeping our double agent a bit safe in the background. Still need his grenade. But at this point, he's a bit too fragile. And the way that we're fighting with Hogbite also means we need to just charge in and charge out a lot. The double agent cannot do that, really. The tracking shot, except taking time, almost does nothing for us because, I mean, in reality, we're moving every single turn, so... This here is where the sector pod currently stands. Looking a bit at the time, I don't want this uh, video to be two hours long, so I will probably... I will probably... Just do my moves and cut out everything that is unrelated. Going to start with the Spectre, of course. Most dangerous enemy in the pack. And moving here. And that concludes our turn. Interesting. Sectopod moved up and is now threatening us with his Wrath Cannon. Another tracking shot on us as well. Our reaction to that will be simple by ignoring both of it. Hmm, wait a second. So if we were to open the door. I uh, can't attack through the wall. He's too far away from the window. Yeah, we'll, we will focus further on the Spectre. Critically hit and stun. That's perfect. Lovely. And we're going to go to here, which is just outside of the range of the tracking shot. I think we should really go and find a good solid cover here. And that's it for this turn. Next round, we're still in tracking shot zone. Sectorport essentially decided to uh, take a shot with the Wrath Cannon, and that is what was uh, what, what was expected. So absolutely no surprises uh, there. Could kill him, but I rather prefer to go with uh, Spectre here. Yeah, that's a better idea. Wondering a bit where the sector pod is. So in absence of knowing where exactly the sector port is, might as well just go all the way over here. See you later, buddy. Eh. Unfortunate, so we're going to take the first shots. 
I don't have any defense against that. Not really. The mech is probably going to use its rockets, which we're immune against. The officer is marking us and taking shots. Too bad, if we would have reflected that back on him, he would have shredded himself, which would have been hilarious. That way, he unfortunately shredded us. Marking? No. Instead, he tried to hit us. Interesting. Yeah, we're immune against his rockets, so... That was easy enough. Okay, I do have an idea how we're going to deal with the situation. We won't don't want to stand on top here. Instead, by positioning ourselves outside of the range of the sector port, we should be fine for one round. And what I would want to do is I'd like to start with Void Conduit, because that's going to heal us up again. And the mech is going to use another set of rockets, which is not going to be an issue. And Void Conduit is going to heal us for the next two turns. Just keeping our health kind of stable, it's 56. And we need to start clear, uh, cleaning house, there are just way too many enemies. Specifically the sector port is going to take some time. There's the sector port moving in. And that's another set of rockets. Unfortunately, the tracking shot in this case is not beneficial for us because we're forced to continue to move. So we're back to 56 uh, hit points thanks to the kind um, advent over there. Might as well start softening up the sector pod. That's a little critical hit. And we're back to full focus. We are moving all the way over here. That way I'm hoping to isolate the purifier so that we can kill it next. And then it's going to be a slugfest against uh, the machines, both of them, the mech and the sector pod have way too much armor. And we're back in the next round. Finally found my good friend the purifier. There we go, one down. Thousands to go, as they say. Moving even further back. And there is the sector pot, yet again. <sighs> I hate his shots. Gotta deal with him. Me. 
Good, and we're back. You know, one of the things that I'd like to do now is Hmm, let's think about that for a second. I'd like to summon the ghost. But I guess it's better off if I will deal with this massive sector port first. There we go. We're outside of tracking shot range, which means I can go into parry. So it's going to be another blade storm attack against the sector port. Ooh, I didn't know the lightning field is just going to go through. All right, learning. We're not, definitely not going to do that again. Lost quite some health in this engagement. Lightning field uh, bypassed the, the dodge chance. Uh, the Actually, all of the chances reflect, um, deflect, and parry. I was under the impression parry would work. As Perry is working for other AoE attacks as well. But Lightning Field seems to be an exception to the rule. So we're not going to take any risks. Instead, let's move over here. So we're taking even some more damage now. Like Gotta be careful. The elite trooper moves out of the way. As for Hogbite, we're moving out of the suppression, even if that means we're getting hit. Nope, he missed. It's not an insured kill if we were to stand here. That's why we need to reposition yet again. Down to 40 hit points, so we've taken 16 points of damage. I think we can regain some of the health by leeching it off of uh, the advent. We were a bit shy on Reflect so far, so it's nice to see that it still works. The Sector Pot is probably one of the more difficult encounters that we had so far. 
Haven't had to deal with one yet. So far the gatekeepers were the only ones that uh, we had to deal with and they were okay. I guess Sectorport overall is also not like the end of the world, but we have limited options to move out of its sphere of influence and that makes it a bit annoying. So over here we're in cover and we're going to kill the sector port. Lightstorm triggers prior to lightning um, to the lightning field. How am I incorrect with that? Bladestorm triggers prior to anything. How? No. All right, Sectorport has definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, outplayed us in this uh, mission, but we learned a lot about the mechanics behind it. In contrast to any other ability, Lightning Field has priority. That's a good insight. Moving over here. And we need to get some hit points back. I was so sure that Bladesome would trump lightning, uh, lightning Field. But it's interesting to see that it didn't. I actually thought the first time that the order was reversed, that it is a display error. Sometimes that happens, but it wasn't. We lost the hit points that we drained. Moving in. Hitting the Mac and going out of line of sight. So we got two more hit points back. A positive that we will get even f more hit points back but we're going we're forced to summon our ghost now i think with the ghost uh, uh, with an earlier ghost summoning it would have gone much easier and we'll need to deal with this joker here so it's getting annoying. All right. Moving into position. Focus being fully loaded. And we're parrying. Okay, good. Things are beginning to look up a bit. No, actually we're not getting nervous.
So let's just kill the mech. We're going to summon our ghost next turn. So we're moving back into the exact same spot. And let's get a ghost up. Good, so as a ghost, I am curious how much, yeah, how many hit points does that tower have? I guess too many to immediately destroy it, but we will be back. Very nice, the ghost can also get hit by a tracking shot. That is pretty helpful because now we can delete the towers and regain some hit points. It just takes off some of the pressure. Good, parrying, overwatch, and the Templar Ghost kind of moves to here. There's the extra hit, and the parry. And as so often, we're going to be tracking shot hit. There we go, building a focus. I'm not sure if the other tower is gone. Let's explore that real quick. It seems to be still alive, but we can simply wait, get the tracking shot. Okay. Time to kill the tower. Haven't fully killed it. And I don't want to stand there, although the Bladestorm would kill it. I'd rather like to get some focus for doing so. All right, good, here we go. Finally, the kill of the tower. Back to three focus. We're at 33 health at the moment, which is pretty low considering the circumstances. We've killed sector, plot, sector port plus two 
Pact of two, that's four. Two towers, that's six. Uh, two down here, that's eight. So we're near. We're uh, we're nowhere near done with this mission here, and we most certainly need to regain health. That should be our number one priority. Number two priority, slightly after the recovery of health, uh, making sure that the Chosen is going to die, because he's incredibly annoying. Moving somewhat in. I want to trigger too many enemies at once. But that's easier said than done. Yep. Much easier said than done. I mean, one of the things uh, that we could do is we simply could move into a really good position, like this one over here, far enough away so that we're not going to trigger the others, and start leeching some hit points. Unfortunately, Void Conduit, I mean, it's a really, really, really powerful ability, don't get me wrong. But unfortunately, Void Conduit does end your turn. There we go. We could either hunker down. Or alternatively, simply move back. Got four additional hit points uh, that will bring us back to 77. Uh, 37, 77 would be nice. We're going to leech one more round. Good. In terms of moving to the right position, hmm. I mean, this over here looks pretty damn good for cover. Field could we use in order to optimize uh, this? So over here isn't bad either. It's probably the best place to be. We need to be just barely out of range for them. So that's the second void conduit. Won't last as long as the first one but it will also transfer hit points. So we're looking at a dual leech, so to speak. And I'll just park this poor soul back here.
So he should probably steal more than just four hit points. Yeah, there we go, eight hit points. We're back to 43. There we go. Yeah, that was not a very good idea, my friend. You know how the saying goes. Shouldn't run to someone with Bladestorm. So fighting against the normal Advents, easy, no problem at all. Good, We're, we are pretty much down on focus and we need to change that. So the way we're going to change that is we're going to kill. There we go. Nice. That's two focus. And I don't want to kill him yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to move all the way back. Because this guy has eight more hit points, which we could leech. Fortunately, we took some extra hits in between, but yeah. I rather was willing to take extra hits on Hogbite than on the Ghost, because the Ghost cannot really heal the hit points super well. Moving in. Okay, the trooper is right over there. Hogbite can move all the way over here. And this here is another eight hit points. Still not sure what I'm going to do with him. He's ridiculously squishy. Doesn't do anything really well. We're getting back up to the point We're getting back up to the point where we're almost at full health again. We could move up and yes, why not? Let's move up. This will kill him, but we're going to get four hit points out of it. So another Void Conduit. It will terminate at the end of the turn. Then he'll take two Bladestorm attacks and essentially die. Okay, 
His friend over here will suffer for one more round and then also die. Okay. Good, we're back to almost 50 hit points. I think there was one more advent left over. There we go, that's just one focus back. Perfect. Focus management and durability had, have been shown incredibly well this time. Good, hog bite. Begins to fill up his focus completely. Very nice, very nice. Just double checking, I think there was one more Advent Priest, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there is, there is the priest. We could attack the chosen. I opt to not do that. Instead, let's move back up here. He might or might not follow us. I'm okay either way. We can definitely drain some life out of the priest. And that should, yeah, almost fill us back up to full, like full full. Moving in in the hopes of Finding them off guard, catching them off guard, which I think we did quite well. It takes care of the priest. Hmm, if we start to hit him, it's not the worst idea. We're losing one focus, but it's going to start dealing damage to him. And he might focus on the ghost instead of our Templar. Okay, not bad. We are moving up here, which means next turn we can use an explosive grenade to try to reduce his armor. Parry, and that's it. We're draining four hit points. So we're at 50, 
four out of 56. That's two additional priests, right? Yeah. Yeah, the priests are a bit annoying, but I think we can deal with them. It's probably going to hit our Templar, who's standing right over here. Or, he's taking away our only option to reduce his armor, which was clever. I mean, it would have been only one armor reduction, but still. Bradford starts peeing his little pants. Good. Let's move over here. We are going to parry. This guy is going to go into sustenance. Could move over here and finish him off. It's a question uh, whether or not that's worth uh, doing or uh, worth our time. We could also go to here and tango a bit with the. Now, you know what? We do have parry going, so might as well just finish this guy and get rid of all of the priests. They are unfortunately incredibly annoying. We're back to full hit points. This priest has been leeched for six hit points, and that's exactly the amount that we were missing. There's the blade storm. There's another blade storm. That's sustenance, which sucks, but whatever. We can deal with it. We can just put the ghost next to it. That's a failed mind control. And whatever shot he's doing is not going to hit us, because we do have parry up. Unfortunately, he's regenerating. Bit of a shame. Moving up. That's a hit. And a good old parry. Should have probably moved over here first in order to collect. That would have been smarter. That way we would have been at three focus already. We can do that next turn. I, I forgot about his incredible movement range for a brief second. We're back at 56 hit points, by the way. And there's another hit. God, I hate sustenance. We're immune to that. Okay. Moving to here. 
Yes. Moving in, so we can also grab the loot at the same time. Advanced scope, advanced focus, and yeah, the psionic energy is great. Advanced scope is okay. At this point, I only am collecting superior items, but advanced is okay for now. So that we do have a B team or a C team where we can use it. There we go. Now it's this is going to hurt. He's going to take some hits. Parry and let's get into cover, but still be able to bladestorm the priest to death. Priest is going to die, shot into parry, and then we're kind of tag teaming the chosen to death. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. I'm wondering, the ghost should have a hundred dodge. So, not even sure why he can crit us. Doesn't really make sense to me. The Planeswalker teleportation, that's just an incredibly annoying feature, to be honest. I want to keep the Ghost. It makes uh, the additional, uh, the, the enemies later a bit easier. Really not sure why he was critting the Ghost. He was not supposed to be able to do that. Does that trigger it? No, it does not trigger Bladestorm yet. Oh, I, I know why he's triggering it. It's part of his weapon. I... No, the... No, no, no. I'm wrong. The weapon of the Warlock automatically crits against psionically active characters. Okay, he still stands there, which is great. Meaning we can simply hunker down and he's going to take a Bladestorm attack. Never mind, he's not. It was a visual display bug. I'll fast forward this here because he definitely can't deal damage to us. The only thing that he could do is kill the ghost. And I'll be back once I've finished. And we're back in the game. Time for Hogbite to finally finish the hunter. Moving up and this is it. Done. Bam. Hogbite is full of health. 56 out of 56. We killed the hunter. And we still got the Templar Ghost. Good. Let's see how this is going to continue. We do have still a very strong position. I mean, the Templar Ghost essentially got only hit once. So you can take another hit. 
and the ghost is really good as a scout. Templar moves in as well. I'm not sure how many enemies are still left. I was thinking about we fight against 30-ish. And so far we had uh, 2 plus 2, that's 4, 7, 9, plus 5, 4 or 5, uh, 5. Uh, that's 14, 15 enemies. There should be still plenty left over, to be honest. 16 if you take the Chosen in there. But maybe I was wrong with the 30 enemies. Maybe it was only 18 on the screen. In which case, 15 enemies would mean there is one more pack and that's it. Skip that. No wonder they just keep coming. Good. We will need to get the uh, to that room. I'll maintain my watch. And probably within the room uh, we're going to find the last pack. Good. So, as for this room, looks like an Andromedon, which is within here or near that room. Normally, the packs don't like move far away. Let's just quickly see if we can find it. We're seeing if one of the tiles is blocked. From time to time they also stand really at weird places. Apparently none of the tiles seems to be blocked. Well this here is blocked. Okay. Okay. Moving in. And we hit the hornet nest right in the middle. That's a hit and two lightning reflexes. Okay. Moving up to kill those guys. Pretty solid hit. I just want to make sure we're not going to be mind controlled. It's not really mind control. I'm more afraid about the shadow bound ability. So we're simply moving through the entirety of the facility. So it's one more pack and we are done.
moving in. All right, wait a second. We can kill the specter relatively easy. Good. Moving back out. The Andromedon is disoriented. It will not move very far. Just saw the vanishing sign here, which means the other specter is somewhere. Question is where? It's really hard to find them if they if there are so many corners. Yep, but sometimes you're lucky. All right, it's almost down, and I don't want it to get away again. So we're using our the abilities of our ghost. Good. Two times parry. The Andromedon should die due to the blade storms. And we can kill its shell next turn. Good, there we go. See, once we do have our um, ghost out, things are being so much, uh, so much easier. Our biggest problem was the one-on-one -on -one against the Sectopod in this entire map. Big learning for us. Lightning field. Can't be trusted. Need to deal with that right away. Big learning number two. Simply deal with the Sectopods right away and don't, don't wait. Good, that's the extraction zone. Let's carry the unit, thanks to our abnormally high movement speed. can simply go there. Done. Full hit points, but it's not going to be a flawless mission. We lost our sidekick without it even being able to do anything, like the double agent. But other than that, the mission was solid. Took us 50 turns. And we finally got the last piece of our Jixi puzzle. Now we're putting them together. Good. Here is the mission debrief. Stasis suit. That's exactly what we were looking for. And look at that, guys. We finally can use the Shadow Chamber again. In a few days, this is going to give us the last research. We, however, still need to 
I'll probably train on. It is end of year number two and a half. Um, or we're two and a half years in. I would guess it will be a bit more grindy. I'll keep you updated and let's see what the next mission is. I maybe splice in one or two cool missions before we go for the network tower. I hope you enjoy the entire show. It's a ton of work to get to that point here and just grinding it on and on and on. Um, but if I could pull it off, it would be an amazing achievement. So thank you so much for watching and leave a comment down below. Bye bye.